In this video, we're going to talk about estimating errors on our fit parameters. This is an example of a fit that works well. One of the simplest things we can do with this fit is look at the difference between the fit and the data. This is called an error plot. For a fit that works well, the corresponding error plot is flat and the points are symmetrically distributed around zero. Here's an example of a bad fit. The data has been underfit and the corresponding epsilons are shown on the right. There's clearly some structure in the residuals, for example, very significant deviations from zero. A Gaussian distribution would never produce anything that looked like this. Structure in the residual plot is evidence of underfitting. It's also helpful to look at the plot of the histogram of the epsilons. This is the histogram for our bad fit from the previous slide. This looks nothing like a normal distribution. Exact normality isn't required, but the histogram should be symmetric around zero and not have too many outliers. Given the assumptions hold, there is a unique solution to the least squares optimization problem. However, there are a range of other parameters which might describe the data almost as well. We express this by reporting errors on the values of the fit parameters, and there are numerous ways to compute this. The most standard way is to assume that the residuals, ei is equal to yi minus fxi, are normally distributed. There are formulas to calculate the standard deviation of the slope and the standard deviation of the intercept. For example, the formula for the standard deviation of the slope, s alpha, is roughly the average deviation of the model from the data divided by the variance in the x direction. So the error will be small if the model closely matches the data, or we have a big spread of values for our input variable. We can also construct a t statistic. t is equal to alpha tilde minus alpha over s alpha. Alpha tilde is the least squares estimate of the slope. This statistic follows a t distribution and can be used to perform hypothesis tests. For example, testing the null hypothesis that the slope parameter is zero. For estimating errors, non-parametric approaches can be very powerful. One such method is jackknife resampling, also known as leave one out resampling. Assuming we have n data points, we would compute the first jackknife estimate of the slope and intercept parameters by fitting all the data points except for x1. This gives an estimate of the parameters, which we call m1 and c1. We do this for all n points, giving n estimates of the parameters m and c. Note that, as long as we can perform a fit, we can do this for any function, even a nonlinear one. So instead of fit and intercept, let's call our general parameter theta. Define theta hat as the value you get by estimating the parameter using all n data points, not leaving any out. The ith jackknife estimate is theta i, that is, the estimate of the parameter you get when you leave out the ith data point. We define theta j as the average jackknife estimate. Note that theta j is not equal to theta hat. The jackknife estimate of the parameter is then theta jack, which is n times theta hat minus n minus 1 times theta j, and the estimate of a standard deviation can also be calculated. The origins of these formulas are a little complicated. Have a look at the additional material linked on the course page for more detail, but note that they apply regardless of the function we use to model the data. Bootstrap resampling is similar to jackknife resampling, except instead of being restric restricted to n resamplings, we can perform any number, which can be very convenient when the amount of data is large. As a rule of thumb, 100 resamplings is often good enough, and 1000 is almost always sufficient. As before, assume we have n data points. Bootstrap resampling chooses n of the original data points at random with replacement and uses those to perform the fit. This shows the fit of the original data. This is the first bootstrap resampling and the values of the fit parameters obtained by fitting a line to the resample points. This is the second bootstrap sample, and this is yet another bootstrap sample. As before, we obtain n estimates for the slope and the intercept or whatever other parameters our model has. Note here, the value n is set by us rather than constrained by the number of data points. Here is a simple way to perform a basic bootstrap resampling. The important parts are that we iterate over the process n boots times. Here we set n boots equal to 1000. This is probably overkill and we can often get away with smaller values, especially for small, well-behaved data sets. Pause and make sure you understand what's going on in this code. This code snippet shows a simple way to use bootstrap samples to obtain error estimates for the parameters. We first choose a confidence interval, which encompasses 68.27% of the variation of the data. If the results have a normal distribution, this would be a one sigma error band. This means we have to measure the distance from roughly the 16th percentile to the 84th percentile, which is what LB and UB are. The final line prints the size of the error bar, which is half the width of the distribution or roughly one sigma. The process of bootstrap resampling described here can be applied to any function, even complicated multidimensional ones, so it's a very versatile and useful technique to have in your arsenal. 